Maury on the other side of me. Okay, we have our contingent from UCLA, the student athletes, Jaime Harquez, Haquez, I should say, Amari Bailey, and uh, the head coach, Mick Cronin. Mick, uh, first of all, um, the atmosphere here in the building tonight was about as loud as we've ever heard it around yeah. here. Can, can you address that a little bit? Well, the Kings are really good, you know. <laughs> Mike Brown's a great guy, great coach. Sabonis is pretty good, so I got a feeling they're gonna have, it's going to be rocking again like Vlade and Pedro were out there come playoff time. But, uh, you know, it's nice I thought uh, it, to see uh, both of our fan bases support us. You know, uh, so much is made now about, you know, NIL, NBA and stuff. Um, the college experience, this guy didn't, he didn't have to go to college. He had, he had seven-figure offer to skip college. Jaime could have left and been in the NBA this year, but they value the college experience, which is why we're so good. Um, you know, but anyway, I want to congratulate Northwestern on their season. Um, Chris is a friend and a great coach. He made some great adjustments in the second half. Then we countered with a little trap on their pick and rolls. It slowed their offense down. Um, but uh, they got, you know, Boo Booey, Boo, Chase Audiz, and there are other guys, you know, Nicholson's a guy who didn't get in the games as a freshman. So they're everything that's right about college basketball. So it's a great game, two great teams, and we we're fortunate, fortunate to grind it out, even though Tiger didn't make a basket. If you tell me Tiger didn't make a basket, I wouldn't have liked our chances. Um, but he's 12 of 12 with the foul line, so he's money. If you wish to raise a question, please uh, raise your hand. Right here. Tark Patel from the LA Daily News. Coach, last night you said you, you, you would take talent over experience, yep. and you needed 18 out of Amari. He got you 14, but a whole lot of defense. Can you just talk about his performance? Uh, yeah, what did Amari have? I mean, what do you have, 14? Yeah, I was hoping for 18, but it's my fault he didn't get enough shots. Um, still working on figuring that one out. Um, it's hard to screen. We tried to set a double for Dave. They ran over a guy, and they called a foul on us. I got to see the film on that one, but, uh, you know, uh, I, it, I would always say, you know, you want talent and experience, but I'll take talent. You know, Mari's got, he's got tremendous, tremendous talent. And th the more he plays, the more comfortable he gets, the better he gets, you know. And he's just as good on the defensive end as he is on the offensive end. Coach Chris Harry, CBS LA, it, the three that David hit to put you yeah. guys up two possessions late was perhaps the biggest shot of the game. You see David go down, obviously a scary sight. Just first, your thoughts on that shot and how big it was and just uh, David's status at this point. None of us are surprised. We're surprised when Dave misses because we see him every day in practice. So he had missed two open ones. I like to, you know, everybody was telling him in the huddle, all these guys, hey, man, shoot the next one. Um, so none of us were surprised when that went in. Um, it was his first make of the game from three. So big shot, you know. Guys got to make plays. You can all, you, you know, the, the guys that make plays, the teams that have kids that make the plays are the teams that are going to move on. Um, so, looks like, it, you know, he didn't break his ankle, which I was worried that he did. I was having flashbacks to when I had a full head of hair in 2000, uh, in the spring of 2000, running out there and Kenyon Martin was laying there. So, uh, but, you know, it looks like he's got a bad sprain. So, Jaime will give him some of that potion that he used last year. You got any of that left? Uh, yeah, I did. Rub it on there. I'm just happy that he didn't break his ankle. I mean, we, it's been crazy for us here lately. Questions? Scott? Uh, hey, Mick, Scott Miller, New York Times. Uh, Audige didn't score in the first half, and then he kind of he lit, caught fire in the yep. second. What kind of adjustments? What did you have to do to <laughs> scramble in the second half to keep him quiet after that? Yeah, we lost him a few times on, on offensive rebounds. So, you know, the reason the game was close is they had 14 offensive rebounds. Um, they, they took 15 more shots than us. And I told these guys it's like playing us because, you know, we tried to turn you over. Uh, the turnovers were even. Uh, but, you know, the off, they, they, we lost him on off offensive rebounds. He, he hit one tough when he got to the right on Dylan. But he can make that. Uh, you know, we told the guys to remind us of Johnny Juzang. Great pull up to his right, can make open three. Um, 
and he was in foul trouble in the first half, so that was a big part of, you know, hard, hard for him to score from the bench. But, look, the way they're constructed, he and Boo Booey are, you know, they got to take a lot of shots, you know, the way their team's constructed. So, we held, you know, we held their percentages, you know, in check. I mean, they shot 37% as a team for the game. If we'd rebounded the ball, we'd have controlled the whole game. We have a Zoom call. Sir, can you hear us? Yes, Dan Tortora, Wake of Call, DT.com. Coach, in this world of college basketball, we've seen parity a lot over the years, and, and we're seeing it right now in this tournament. Just what you can say about how difficult it is to get into the Sweet 16 and, and how so many teams, no matter what the conference, are giving their best game every single night to the point where we're seeing history this time. Well, look, this isn't new. I would say nothing's new. Um, you know, I'm from the Midwest. You know, I'm getting used to L.A. where the late, you know, it's, it's Dodgers, Lakers. You know, then you get to college and, you know, after that. But uh, college basketball is probably one of the best sports to watch because how hard everybody plays every night. And it's, it's not just this tournament. Everybody just happens to be watching right now. If you'd have been here when we played, or been in Vegas earlier, we played Illinois, it was like a Final Four game, and that was November. So, you know, we don't, we don't play 82 games. So the kids in college basketball, the, uh, the, the intensity, it's so, it's so hard to score. I tell these guys, they're both going to play in the NBA. It's way easier to score up there, way easier. Guys are tired. They went out the night before. They play 82 games. You know, here their scouting report, uh, endless scouting report. You got days to prepare. Kids are trained. They're playing two games a week max. Um, zone defense helps everywhere. Um, the intensity. So it just happens to be right now the games are all on a neutral floor. And, you know, the best teams, best 68 teams are playing. So, you know, they're, but to me it's, it's the best watch. It's the best sport to watch all the time. I'm probably biased, though. Jim. Uh, Jim Alexander from the Southern California News Group. We talked about the similar similarities between these teams. Was there anything at all that surprised you about the way this game unfolded? Not really. I, I didn't think they'd go away. I watched, too, I watched them too much. Um, you know, I saw them play during the regular season because I root for uh, Chris and Brian James. So, um, you know, I have so much respect for Chris. He could have sat in Durham, North Carolina, and waited for Coach K to retire. And he said, no, nah, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm from Chicago. I'm going to go home and take the Northwestern job. And we're talking about a team that had never been to the NCAA tournament. Um, I respect that. He, you know, he ran, he ran into a tough situation. And, uh, you know, I, I, they, in their team this year, I mean, they're like Penn State. Somebody just told me that, you know, they, they had a shot at Texas. doesn't surprise me because I watched them play them two overtime games. So they're a grizzled, tough team. You know, they hit some tough st shots. Bowie hit a step back three. Audis hit some tough ones. Um, you know, and their hustle on the offensive glass really bothered us. So it didn't surprise me that they came back at us. In the back, Mick. Uh, Dylan Hernandez of the LA hey, Times. Hey, how are you? Uh, you know, you've talked about having winning players on your team and stuff, and you know this is now your third consecutive time going to the Sweet 16. Uh, yeah, COVID, you know, COVID. We've, ob we've obviously seen, you know, the right top seeds getting knocked out of this thing and stuff, and seems like you know your guys kind of consistently in those kind of in ugly games like this too, kind of find ways to pull things out. What's kind of the difference between a team that maybe steps up a lot of the times and you know, like you guys, almost all of the time? Well, look, you know, I was fortunate. I worked for two of the best to ever walk the college sidelines. You know, my dad was a Hall of Fame high school coach, so, you know, I was trained on, you know, how to win and how to coach winning basketball. Um, so, you know, you got to defend and take care of the ball and play smart. Obviously, you got to have players. But, we, you know, we, you know, make, force another team to try to make shots to beat you, making, being able to make adjustments and your players follow the adjustment. I mean, that stuff's all important. I mean, it, you know, because like, like Chris was hurting us with the ISO, I told these two start trapping it. We immediately got a steal. Um, so, you, you know, you got to train to do those things. You know, there's this, like I said, man, when I got the job, we spelled, people started asking about style of play, you know, W-I-N. You know, we got to teach guys how to win. 
And there's a lot of ways to win. Like I would tell you, our transition early is what got us the lead. And I thought that was big because they're such a good half-court defensive team. So, and we, you know, it's not like we had a lot of practice to get ready for that. I was able to talk to the guys about, you know, when we get, we get a stop, we're flying down for layups um, because we don't want to get into a, you know, a game in the 50s. So, you know, we just try to, do, try to teach guys how to play winning basketball. You know, it's just no, and you got to be, you got to be able to play situational winning basketball because situations change. Um, you got to play smart. Then it, look, man, it does, Dylan, it, you know, you got a guy to get the ball to Tiger and he walks up and never, you know, like, you know, he missed a free throw against Arizona. And I, and, you know, in hindsight, I'm glad. I'm glad we weren't happy coming here. Um, and the odds of him missing again are very low, <laughs> you know. Because that's just who these guys, you know, that's just who he is, you know, so. Question over here. Players, I would take Oop. players, though, over coach. Uh, Alex Cervantes, Daily Northwestern for Jaime or Amari. Uh, and you, Northwestern missed, its, I believe, its last 12 of 14 shot attempts. Besides the uh, traps that were already mentioned, was there anything that you think shifted defensively over the last eight minutes? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think um, on the switches, um, I was talking to Amari during the game, and, and we were switching kind of flat. And I think um, I, I talked to him, and, and we talked to Coach in the huddle. We, we started getting up, we're switching up into him and, and really bringing up the pressure again, because like in the first half, I think we shied away from it in the second half with the just light switching. And then I think in the second half, uh, we picked it up a lot more. Quick one, Coach, when uh, Adem, his shoulder, he comes to the sideline, what well, was he's the... sore. I mean, he, he's, he's extremely sore. Okay. Just so if curious. he gets hit on it in any way, he's sore. Okay. You know, and, uh, the fact that he's out there shows, you know, shows, shows you what a warrior he is. He's really sore. And then so, just... it, I mean, he's playing with a brace on, you know. So, I mean, he could, make, he could, take, he could get a hit in it. Or he could reach for a ball. You know, anything, any type of movement like that, and it's going to aggravate him, and it's just going to be like that. Was there a discussion on maybe keeping him out of the game? He's going to be sore. I mean, there's always going to be a discussion. We'll see. You know, I don't know what, you know, if, at details, you know, but it was, it, it's going to happen. Just a quick one for Amari. Amari, uh, your explosion has really, the way you elevate is, is really taken the next level recently. I saw it your junior high school. And then I know you've had some injuries and things. Do you think your your athleticism is at the height it is now? Like, it, can you talk about that a little bit? Because it's been really great the last couple of weeks. <laughs> you got him all. You, you talking about his athleticism? I, I know he was athletic. Oh, he did win that dunk contest. That's right. He showed me he did. He won this dunk contest back in the day. That's right. Oh, his. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were talking about his. Well, both of them, it helps. It helps when you're not hurt. <laughs> I would say it's getting there. Um, not where I want it to be, but this will do for the time being. And just any athleticism that I can use uh, for defense or offense, uh, I'll take it. So, Tracy. <laughs> uh, for <laughs> Coach and for Amari, uh, Talk a little bit about Dylan Andrews stepping up, hitting those free throws. Your fellow freshman, when he, I mean, he's picked by the other and he team. hit the three too. And, and he, he hit the three. three, but those clutch free throws, uh, I that put it to six, I think, with what? big, not a yeah, surprise. Twenty seconds. Yeah, not not a surprise. Dylan's a tough kid. Amari, I mean, I would agree with Coach. <laughs> <laughs> you said something to him, though. I saw you say something to him. Him? Oh no, I was just saying that. Uh, I mean, moments like this he's built for. Um, I mean, all of our guys getting extra work. Um, I've seen Dylan shoot thousands of free throws. So to see him go up and hit two and like, I don't know, like this environment, I'm not surprised by it at all. I feel like you should step up to challenges. So, Mario, you're from Chicago. Yeah. Is this kind of a tough brand of Chicago basketball <laughs> that, you, that you're kind of used to? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, it was a nice physical game, so. Um, that's something we always invite over here, uh, just collectively as a group, and I'm glad we got the win.
Tony Harvey, uh, NBC Sports Radio. Um, I do want to follow up on that. Amari, I don't think you lost a game on this floor yet, you know. Uh, Jaime, what is it like playing with these freshmen? Because, yes, Dylan did hit a, hit a big shot late in the game. Uh -huh. I think I told him after the first game, like after you play your first game, you're not really a freshman anymore. Uh, we expect you guys to come up here and step up. There's a reason coach recruited you. And that's for moments like these. I, I mean, co coach takes pride in who he brings to this program. And you can see it with the freshmen that he's brought in. I mean, they've just been so big for us. And we wouldn't be in this position without them. So I don't think they're really freshmen anymore. They, they stepped up to the plate. Yeah, We're plus 10 with Dylan in the game in his 15 minutes. Got time for one more question. Hi, man. I know that individual accolades aren't something that you're always about, but tonight you passed Bill Walton on UCLA's all-time scoring list. Given how, <laughs> given how much. Where's that pudding? How? No. He's now 12th. Wow. Shit. That's big time right that's there. Man. Time. I gotta give it to you, man. Man, no, that's insane. That's, that's crazy. Insane. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be sure to tell Bill when I see him. <laughs> but no, that's insane, bro. Given how much <laughs> Bill has meant to the aura of UCLA basketball. What does it mean for you to put yourself in the context of UCLA basketball greats like Bill and others? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of crazy. I didn't, even, uh, I didn't, I didn't know that, but it's funny because I see, we see Bill all the time in the mornings. He always does our games at, back at, back at home. So, I mean, just to be in a conversation with a guy that's so great like that, I mean, it's, I'm just blessed. I'm just blessed to be in this position. Um, blessed to play under such a great coach, blessed to go to this institution. I mean, I don't really know what to say. That's that's crazy. Come back for a fifth year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Toodles. Okay, from Northwestern, our student athletes are Chase Audige and Boo Booey, and the head coach, Chris Collins. Coach, it was a heck of a ball game, and you got down early, but you never quit, never gave up, and tied it on several occasions, and, you know, can you address, address the whole game? Sure. Um, you know, congratulations to UCLA. They're an outstanding team, very physical, very tough, very well coached. Um, you know, they came out early and gave us problems. You know, their physicality defensively, their aggressiveness. You know, we had a hard time getting started in the first half. But, you know, I thought Boo's basket there at the end of the half to cut it to 10 was huge. You know, we, we got a little bit of momentum there. And I, I wasn't surprised the way we played in the second half. You know, because you know what? That's, that's what these guys have been. And that, that's what our team has been all year long. You know, we, we have a fighter spirit. You know, we, we, we go to the next play. If we get knocked down, we keep fighting. Um, we keep battling. Um, I, I could not have been prouder of my guys. I think as a coach, all you ever really ask for is for your guys to leave it on the floor, you know, and, and, and give everything they have, you know, emotionally, physically, with their communication. And we did all that. You know, one shot goes in, we're just talking in the back. You know, Chase has a three that goes in and out. We had a drive, you know, late, and then they go down and make a. Th you know, sometimes a guy makes a shot and you miss a shot, and 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 that's the difference in an NCAA tournament game. But that was that was just a hard playing game, man. Both teams, you know, we knew that 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 we knew they were going to do that, and I think the greatest compliment for these guys is I think they know that we were going to do that as well. 
you know, I think it was just it was one of those games and, and we had our chances. We, we we felt really good. We got the game tied. We were really positive. We were really confident. Um, and these guys were fantastic in the second half. We finally found some things that that were working for us offensively in the second half. We found some openings. We saw the ball go in a little bit and just heartbroken. I, I told these guys in in the locker room, like, I've never had more fun coaching. You know, these these guys, they they've shown up every day. They they've they allowed me to coach them. You know, whether sometimes that mean to get on their butts, but other times love them. You know, we had a lot of fun along the way. We worked really hard, but it was fun. And we were really connected and these guys were incredible and um, just just couldn't be more proud of the group. And Annie Costable from the Chicago Sun-Times. Chris, this game had a lot of similarities to um, six years ago when you guys powered that, that late game comeback. Um, what was your message to the team at half? Uh, what differences did you see that allowed Chase to, to sink those shots and, and power you guys um, in this attempted comeback? Yeah, I mean, I, the one difference was we were down 20 to Gonzaga. <laughs> so um, 10 was a little bit more manageable. But, um, you know, we just wanted to regroup. Uh, we kind of late in the half started finding we, we were a pick and roll based team and they were doing a really good job with their centers. You know, they are mobile guys. They were coming out. So we started setting more screens with Hawkes his man um, and he was switching and we felt like we had a quickness, you know, match up there. And, and I thought it really kind of unlocked, you know, these guys, you know, because when we were doing the ball screens with the, the big men, they were just trapping these guys. So they had to pass. When we started using other guys to screen, they were just switching, and then these guys could do what they do. You know, they were breaking them down. Chase hit some big shots. Boo got to the rim. We found guys on kicks. Um, so, you know, it just kind of opened up for us. And then once we saw the ball go in a little bit, that's like anything. The crowd's getting into it, the momentum of the game. Um, then all of a sudden, the game's tied, you know, and it's whatever, eight minutes to go. And we got in the huddle, and we're like, all right, it's, this is what we wanted. We, it's an eight-minute fight. And um, give UCLA credit. You know, every time we kind of made a run, they they made big plays. You know, Hawkes is an incredible player, one of the best in the country. Tiger Campbell, his command as a point guard, really good. Give Amari Bailey credit. I thought he really stepped up today and gave him great production as a third scorer. Jim. Jim Alexander from the Southern California News Group. Um, I, we all expected what kind of game this was going to be, toughness on toughness, and, and basically grown man basketball. <laughs> was there anything about this game that surprised you, about well, the, way, the way it unfolded? Yeah, I'll let these guys talk because they were the ones out there on the floor. So I don't, what were your guys' thoughts on that? Uh, nah, uh, I think we kind of knew it was going to be a war, you know, and it was going to be back and forth. And, you know, we started out really, really cold. You know, I think I airballed my first shot and hit the side of the backboard on my second one. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, we was just trying to hang our hat on defense and trying to get as many stops. But coming to the second half, we just, you know, it was, we had to lay everything on the line, you know, and, and we, we knew it was going to be a war throughout. It wasn't going to be a, a blowout either way. And, uh, I mean, credit to UCLA. They made more plays down the stretch. They're a really good team. They got some really good players. But, you know, we, we, we expected to play that type of game today. Over here. Coach, Jaime Jaquez is one of the more unique players in the country and his ability to drive into the lane and work off the pivot foot, create second yes. opportunities off of pump fakes and then play outside and make a three. Is his type of game something that you guys had seen before or practiced against? Because it's one of the more unique types of games for somebody that's a 6'7 a small forward in the country. Yeah, no, I mean, we really haven't played anyone kind of like him. I mean, we're in our league. We had three All-Americans in our league, you know, with Edie, Trace Jackson Davis, and Pickett. Um, and they're all kind of unique in their own way. You know, no one's really as big as Edie and, and good. Trace is just so unique with what he does. And then Pickett, um, what he does is unique. So, uh, but, but Jaime does a great job. He's really good in the open floor. He's, he's strong and physical. He's, he plays off his pivot foot and, and shot fake really well. I mean, the main emphasis, we just stay down on his fakes. And if anything, you got to live with some of those fadeaway Jays. Um, he made a couple threes early, you know, which we were going to, we were going to be okay with giving up a little bit. And uh, he's just an outstanding player. I mean, there's a reason he's an All-American Player of the Year in the Pac-12. I mean, he's an, an older guy that's played in big games. He's a warrior. He's physical on the glass. Um, so it was, it was a tough cover. I mean, we knew we weren't going to stop him. I mean, we didn't, we didn't come into the game saying we were going to take him out of the game. What we tried to do was could we make it hard on him? You know, could we speed him up a little bit? Could we get him to off his sweet spot? 
Um, and with great players, a lot of times at heart, he was still able to, to get his production. I thought we did a pretty good job against him on the boards. Um, you know, he wasn't able to hurt us on the offensive boards, but he got out in transition. He got some stuff around the basket and just give him credit. I mean, I'm a big fan. I, I just think he's, he's a tough minded guy. That's a really good player. Terrific college player. Over here. Uh, Matt Shelton for wildcatreport.com uh, against Boise state. Uh, the Broncos out rebounded you guys offensively uh, 20 to nine tonight something coach Cronin mentioned uh, that was 14 to three in your favor uh, what went into such a big difference in such a short amount of time well we had a nice little film session yesterday and we uh, we showed we showed about all 20 of those offensive rebounds um, and just to just to make the point and we knew UCLA was even bigger and more physical and even more athletic than Boise so we told our guys, if we give up 20 offensive rebounds, we might as well just go home right now. So, and you know what? These guys, they, they responded like they have for us all year long. They, they took the challenge. They took it on. Uh, thought we did a much better job putting bodies on guys. You know, they, they didn't have free runs to the basket. We did a great job on the glass. And then conversely, we were able to get double-figure offensive rebounds. So I think the thing about us that people don't realize, because maybe we're not the biggest, like, physically imposing team, is we're a pretty physical team. You know, I mean, these guys, the mindset they've had, we, we've, we've been physical all year. You know, we're physical defensively. We're physical on the board. You know, I think that was a real underrated aspect of this year's team. So I wasn't surprised that we bounced back in that way, the way we did tonight. Question here. Matthew Nicholson was a career high today. Um, can you just speak a little bit to, like, his production, how that like, kind of embodies the way this team's played all year with, like, different role players stepping up in key times even the most? Yeah, I'm just so proud of Matt. I mean, I think these guys are too. You know, Matt, for the last couple years, you know, when a big – it takes time for big guys. You know, he's seven foot one. He's 270 pounds. Like, it takes time, you know. So, like, you see so many – but, you know, what? When, when you have a big guy who's committed to working – and also you have a big guy who's competitive and tough and wants to be, then they get better, you know, and that's what Matt has done. He's a competitive guy. He's, he's, he really cares. He works really hard. And then it just so happened tonight, you know, because of the way they were double teaming these guys with the big guy, we were able to find him a lot on rolls. You know, I think they were really trying to stay out on our shooter, shooters and give these guys credit. They made some great passes. I think Chase had six assists in the first half, about five of them were to Matt. And he finished, you know, and, and even the way he stepped up and made free throws, he made three out of four late in the game. So um, excited about Matt's future. He's, he's a young guy. This was a great year for him. And, and to cap it off the way he did tonight was, was pretty fun for me to watch. Over here. Bradley Locker, inside on you. For Boo and Chase, you guys had just five points combined in the first half, but you ended with 34. Can you just talk about how you guys responded in the second half, remained resilient, and what you feel like you showed not only tonight, but on this enormous stage? Uh, yeah, so like Coach was kind of saying before, I think that their bigs were doing a real good job of just, you know, uh, staying with the ball in our, all of our ball screen actions. And so we were kind of forced to pass since uh, they're going to double team. And, uh, and then I feel like in the second half, uh, you know, Coach made an adjustment and, and we started going off our four and they started switching and then we were getting the isos. Uh, so it was, it was a little bit more uh, easy to get downhill. Uh, for the both of us, and you know, we got to our spots, and, and our teammates trusted us, and we just and they went in. <laughs> Any other questions? Am um, Boo and Chase, you guys have one more year of eligibility, and I we talked about this yesterday. But does this game impact anything? Does it um, make you guys think a little bit harder about potentially coming back next season? I'm not even thinking about that right now. You know, we put everything into this game. We put everything into trying to make a run at <coughs> the national championship. And I mean, I, I, I'm really not even thinking about that right now. Yeah, I mean, like Jay said, man, we had our whole hearts in, into winning this tournament. And we really believed, even though other people didn't believe. So <coughs> we're just going to get go back, get rest, and, you know, figure it out later. But, you know, our, our hearts were left out on the floor tonight. And Chris, one more for you. Um, you've talked a lot during this run about, um, you know, sustained success, mm -hmm. that being different than, than the last time that this program went to the tournament. Um, what are you taking away from this moment that's going to be different, that's going to impact this program differently? 
I just think the way our guys approach this year, um, the mindset we have, um, I think we've created an identity, you know, which I think for a lot of years, and, and maybe that was my mistake a lot, is you kind of come into every year and you're trying to figure out, okay, this is our group. How do we figure out how to win? And I never felt like we had like an identity, you know, of our program. And I think what these guys have done is they've set an identity to our program, uh, identity of work, identity of toughness, identity of defense. Um, that I think will carry over. And, you know, right now, like these guys said, and, and I'm so glad they said that. I mean, we made a pact with each other at the beginning of this whole year, and, and these guys were at the start. Like, let's just stay in the present. You know, too many people always worry about what's next and what are we going to do after this and where. And then you, it ruins what you're doing in the now. And the beauty of these guys is they've really taken that to heart. They, they've been in the moment every day. You know, if we had a tough loss, we came back and we were in the moment to get better. If we had a big win, same thing. We, we dusted all, we, we didn't listen to the outside noise. We stayed true to who we were. We stayed in the moment. We stayed in the present. Um, you know, we're going to get home and, and, and obviously rest up. And, and it still stings right now because I, I really wanted to keep going with these guys. I, you know, there's a lot of years you're, you're kind of okay if it ends. <laughs> Um, I was not okay. Like, I wanted to keep fighting with these guys. I mean, they, they, what this group has done for me this year, not, nothing about job stat. And not, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about how they've invigorated me as a coach. Um, was really special. And, and I'll always be indebted to those guys for that. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. Thank you guys all year for covering us. Appreciate it.